Okay, so t today we're going to talk about mixer design using Agilent ADS and we're going to look at a specific example of a double balanced switching mixer, uh, a gas mimic. So switching mixers, uh, we can use diodes or transistors, MOSFETs for example, uh, generally uh, using a ring. The example we're going to look at today is a switching FET mixer, so we're going to use some gas mimic FETs. We're going to integrate or incorporate a LO ballon, passive ballon on the die, and also an RF passive ballon on the die, and we're going to have a differential IF which we'll combine externally. I think this slide is quite useful. It shows um, an RF waveform, sinusoidal waveform, and if we switch the transistor gates using uh, an LO frequency uh, represented by a square wave, then we see the resulting waveform has a very high content at the uh, sum and difference frequencies or the IF. So let's have a look at uh, a mixer example. So here we have a three port mixer in, in a test bench. We'll just push into this mixer. So here we have uh, the quad ring which we'll push into in a second. We have an LO ballon here which is represented by uh, an EM simulation. Uh, for this talk, so we won't be pushing into this. Um, we have papers on our website which describe uh, the design of these balloons. It's actually a March and ballon. We also have some uh, incorporated in the EM simulation some matching uh, network for the LO to uh, give us the right voltage to switch the transistors. And likewise, we have an RF ballon here, which is also uh, an on chip March and ballon represented by uh, this EM simulation here. We have an IF uh, filter, very simple filtering on the chip, and then we combine externally with um, an external ballon represented here by a, a, a transformer. And we apply a DC bias via an active bias circuit to the transistors. We actually set the gates to around uh, half the voltage between on and off states uh, to make the switching process simpler. And if we push into the quad ring, it looks a bit messy, but I've included all the uh, strays and parasitics and all the little bits of inter interconnecting transmission lines. Basically here, we have a ring of four switch vets and the LO here switches the gates. Okay, for our first simulation, we're gonna do the simplest one. We're gonna look at a fixed frequency case. So this mixer covers uh, essentially 18 to 38 gig RF input and uh, similar LO range uh, 20 to 40 gigahertz and a very wide IF range uh, almost DC to uh, 16, 17 gigahertz. So for this first example we're going to look at a fixed RF of 28 gigahertz, look at a fixed IF output of 2 gigahertz and we're going to set the LO to be high side of the RF with this simple equation here. Press simulate. And what we see here is the output spectrum that we would measure on a spectrum analyzer. So we see uh, some LO breakthrough, some of the RF breakthrough, and the sum and difference uh, signals are here. This is the one we're interested in, the difference signal, the IF at 2 gigahertz. And we also see uh, all the other M plus or minus N spurs, which will go on way beyond 80 gigahertz the case I've got here. Interesting is how, how we set up the harmonic balance control block. At the moment I'm saying I'm using five harmonics of the LO and two harmonics of the RF and looking at a maximum mixing uh, order of seven. So the maximum number we need to put in this block here is, is the sum of these two. We can certainly put smaller. If I show you the case where we just have one LO signal, one RF harmonic and maximum order of two, which is our one plus or minus one uh, sum of different signals. Press sweep. We get the RF LO breakthrough and the sum of different signals. Uh, the conversion gain we get is uh, pretty in inaccurate because we're not taking into account all the, uh, the signals that are generated in our, in our mixer and we have no other spurious signals at all. If I were to drop this max order to one, 
which doesn't allow us to look at M plus or minus N where M and N are one products and sweep that we basically just see the IF and LO breaking through and no sum and difference products. So let's go back to our default case. I'm going to set the max order to slightly less than seven, say five for example, just to uh, speed up simulations and really there's no point in looking at seven times 40 gigahertz signals, we're not interested uh, for this example. So back to our simulation. So I've set up equations which I'll discuss in, in, in a minute to give us our conversion gain, uh, which is shown as a negative number, i.e. conversion loss, and our LO rejection. And quickly, for the frequency case, we can check that our sums are correct. So basically, the LO breakthrough here, we're using a LO of plus 10 dBm, uh, measuring minus 19 out, so therefore 29 dB LO rejection. Likewise, we're using an RF input signal of minus 20 dBm, measuring the IF out, out here at minus 28.6, so therefore our conversion loss is 8.6 dB. So what I'm going to do now is set up uh, a sweep. So I'm now going to sweep the IF in frequency using the harmonic balance controller. And I'm going to press simulate. Uh, sorry, and I'm also going to sweep uh, the LO power. So the fixed frequency, fixed power case just had a, an LO power of plus 10 dBm, which is what we ideally want to use. I'm going to vary the LO just to see what performance we get, as well as uh, sweeping the RF. So it's quite a lengthy simulation, this. So while this is going on, we'll discuss some of the equations. So conversion gain basically defined as the uh, IF power minus the RF input power and the IF power is calculated from measuring the uh, voltage probe at the output uh, in a given Z load which is 50 ohms in this case. Uh, the 1 minus 1 is the mixer product that we desire, i.e. it is the LO minus the RF. Likewise the LO rejection is the LO output power minus the LO input power uh, minus to give us a rejection. And remember that the system works on uh, SI units so all powers are measured in uh, watts so because I'm defining the input power in dBm we use watts to dBm to convert this um, output power to dBs as well. And we can put down frequency uh, specific control blocks and the, the output spectrum block straight from the palette uh, on the side here. Okay, that was about uh, two and a half minute simulation because we are looking at a whole range of frequencies, a whole range of LO powers uh, and fifth order mixing products. So if we look at our, um, we can now plot conversion gain against RF input frequency. We see we get around uh, eight and a half, nine dB conversion gain, rolls off as we go higher in frequency. So the cyan curve is our nominal plus 10 dBm LO power. And as we reduce this LO power down to seven, then the conversion loss obviously uh, increases as you would expect. What I can also do is switch over these blocks so what I'm now doing is showing you uh, swap performance against IF. So instead of having a fixed IF now, we're having a fixed LO of 30 gig. Uh, this is just a nominal IF. We're going to sweep the IF from this con control block, this time using a parameter sweep uh, rather than the HB controller. And we're going to define the uh, RF equals to the LO minus the IF. So now we see conversion gain performance against the swept LO IF. And as you can see, we've got the same sort of uh, minus 8.5 dB values. What you'll notice is that the IF band is very wide. In fact, it works well below 2 gigahertz and it works above 16 gigahertz. Um, so this is really why we're going to combine um, the IF signal off chip. It would be very difficult and very uh, gas area consuming to have a, an on chip 
IF ballon. Now I'm going to revert back to the initial fixed frequency. So this, I'm going to go back to my uh, RF in of 28, my IF out of 2, and therefore my LO of 30. I'm going to sweep now the RF input power. So it's a small signal minus 20 dBm nominal, but I'm going to sweep it from minus 30 to plus 14, uh, and then check the compression performance. I'm also going to use the Agilent uh, gain compression bench, uh, set up for 1 dB com compression for, for a mixer. So we have two input frequencies and uh, output frequency defined as the IF output. So again, this is going to be a quite lengthy uh, simulation. Okay, so now on this graph, in red, I'm plotting the conversion gain negative of course, against RF input power, and we can see that we're going into compression. So at the same time we plot IF output power against RF input power. So nominally for low input powers we have 8.5 dB conversion loss, that rises to 9.5 at 1 dB compression, and our input power for 1 dB compression is around minus 1.6. DBM. But the Agilent uh, XDB control box gives us a more accurate figure for this because this is uh, done in 1 dB steps. So out output 1 dB compression point around minus 1.4. The input 1 dB compression point is therefore the conversion loss higher than that, so around 8.5 dB, which is the figure that you always get quoted on data sheets, of course. Now in practice, we measure this. Uh, I'll show you that in a second. We typically measure IP3 performance of about plus 17, which is about, you know, in the order of eight to 10 dB higher than the P1 dB point. So before we look at some results, this is uh, our GDS2 layout of this mixer. So here's our quad fret ring. Here's our simple RF ballon. Here's our equivalent LO ballon and a uh, nice little neat uh, reactive but also resistive LO matching circuit. Uh, IF is a pair of uh, 100 ohm differential transmission lines with a little bit of matching and here is an active bias circuit which actually accurately sets the gate voltage between the uh, on and off states and also compensates for process variation and temperature. So we've actually had this chip fabricated Here's a photograph of the chip uh, undergoing RFOW test. So we have uh, a set of DC needles here to give us our uh, supply voltages. Uh, RF in here, hello rather, RF in here, ground signal ground probes, and our ground signal ground signal ground differential probe on the uh, IF output. I won't go into too much detail, but here's a typical measurement. So the red, green, and blue tra because here are three mimics on the same wafer. Uh, conversion loss at our RF of around 28 gigahertz uh, shown against LO power. So at the uh, 10 dBm level, we get around the eight and a half that we simulated. The simulation is shown in this dotted line. So what we can see is for acceptable LO power levels, uh, uh, simulation is spot on to measured. Differs a little bit when we get down to very low input powers, but this difference is, is only just over half a dB here. And don't forget, we're not really turning the, uh, the switches on very hard with these sort of low powers. Okay, so that con concludes this uh, particular talk. Uh, there are a lot more examples of uh, this sort of design on our website, plextechrfi.com. Uh, under publications, for example, we have um, a whole paper based on this design but uh, lots of other uh, circuits as well.